This week, I challenged myself to create a spooky landscape in the spirit of Halloween. I've never attempted a drawing like this before, so I'm treading some shaky ground. Let's take a look at my drawing process and at some of the ridiculous mistakes I made along the way. Of course, before starting the drawing, I must choose an excellent color palette. I've learned the, um, hard way that colors are rather important. So, in the spirit of Halloween, I chose two complementary colors, yellow and blue, and varied their brightness and hue to form two gradients. This left me with a very spooky palette. I didn't just want to jump into the drawing, because this painting is much more complex than what I've done previously, so I really need a cohesive plan. I quickly sketched out some spooky cottages in the center, in my signature wacky style, of course. I really wanted the drawing to focus on these two buildings, so I curved the entire landscape around the houses. I drew some foreground trees to make the scene feel a bit darker, and to create the feeling of depth. And finally, I sketched in an oversized moon behind the houses, and added some spooky pumpkins in the foreground. But I felt I needed a little more planning. So I did some very rough shading to give myself an idea of what the final scene should look like. This helped me realize that I really wanted the windows to stream light into the scene. After all, the areas with the most contrast to the main blue palette are the bits of orange and yellow light strewn across the scene. The light rays should really help the houses pop. And now, after years of careful planning, okay, you got me, it was only 10 minutes, but now, I was ready to begin. I started by sketching in the outline of the first house, making sure to refine the edge with even more care than I did with a sketch. In this drawing, the sketch will be removed, so I can't use it to help correct my rough edges. I'm not doing any shading on the houses yet. That will come later. Right now, I just need the full shape of the houses. I'm not sure why I didn't do this first, but at this point I came back and colored the sky in with a dark blue and filled the moon in with a glowing white. I don't need to take quite as much care with the ground layers, since I'm going to come back to them later and refine them with my brushes. I just need the basic layers drawn, so I don't accidentally forget about them. Those foreground trees aren't looking mightily suspicious though. I quickly drew the silhouettes of the windows in a bright yellow. There is no interior detail, since the light is so bright, and the glass is frosted. I also took this time to shade the houses in and add a border around the front door of the larger house. I added in a shadow to make the doorway pop, which I thought looked rather fancy. The drawing is beginning to feel a little spooky. I came back to add in detail on each layer with some brushes I created. I used a bush brush in the middle ground and a tree brush in the background. The scene was now intricate enough that I was able to hide the sketch. I knew these houses had to be detailed though. They can't just be totally smooth. So I took inspiration from my game and decided to draw on some details with a pencil brush. I added detail to the siding of the houses, along with adding some crisscross shingles on the roofs. The windows also needed some detail too, since I don't want them to be massive panes of glass. To fix this slight issue, I drew on some supports to the glass, making sure to give them a blend mode to make the light spill around it. Remember those suspicious looking trees? <laughs> Silly question, how could you forget? I needed to fix these trees before they soured my drawing any further. The process of drawing these trees taught me some interesting things. I found to make a tree look truly spooky, you must constantly make the branches curl backwards. In this style at least, it's best to draw these branches with sharper lines to make the branches feel unforgiving. I also added a little bit of hanging moss to show that these trees haven't been dead for quite some time. To finish off the foreground, I finally blocked in those pumpkins that I had imagined in my sketch. I was far enough in to start considering the little details of the drawing, such as the light spilling out of the windows and doors. The light streams were easy. I just made a selection and used a soft brush to create the rays. The light on the grass was not so simple. I had a lot of trouble with this. I just couldn't get it to look right. I tried warping it, I tried using a mask, I even tried redrawing it. Then finally, I had the idea to use a half grass brush around the edges to make it seem like it was spilling over grass and not a smooth surface. 
After a little more masking, I finally liked how it looked. But it was at this moment that I made a grave mistake. I dared to draw a pumpkin. I did my usual shading, and... What, what is that? I swear I can draw. Well, let's see if a little bit of exposure can help. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, let's just pretend we don't see it. Yes, that's much better. I'm lying to myself. How can I go on with such atrocities in my foreground? I have no choice but to simply redraw it. This time, I was a little more careful with my shading. The front of the pumpkin should be even darker than before, and there should only be a slight rim light. The background in this drawing was still lacking though, so I decided to add in some miniature spooky trees. Using the same technique as I used in the foreground, I sketched in a whole forest of evil trees. I also added a third cottage in the background, just to help the houses fit in the drawing a little more. I thought the moon could use a little more detail, so I carefully crafted some craters on the surface. Let's see what that looks like. Hmm. Thank goodness I did this on a separate layer. I realized that the moon must be so bright that it would look like an orb, and thus doesn't need any surface detail. There are only a few details left to add, the most prominent of which are the evil pumpkins in the foreground. I carefully recrafted their faces to take on far spookier and more intricate expressions. These should have a lot of detail, because they are so close to our imaginary camera. I even redrew the first pumpkin's expression, because I didn't feel it had enough detail. And, after a few bad choices with fog and overlays, I was finally ready to apply a camera raw filter and view the result. And here you have it, my first truly spooky painting. Tell me your thoughts about it down below, and make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. I of course always feel awkward asking that, but I hear it is the wise move. I'm going to do more drawings like this in the future. I had never tried to draw a 3D landscape like this. It makes me wonder what epic things can be created when I use these newfound skills for my game. If you are wondering what I could possibly mean when I reference my game, try clicking on my first devlog on screen now. But anyway, thank you for watching.